Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. The fact that I'm holding a bottle of vinegar in my hand might give you a clue who the guest is today. This man is to vinegar what Newton is to gravity. His name is Tommy Balsamic. He's the owner of California Balsamic, and he's going to be working with the recipes you guys submitted with the Simply Lemon Vinegar, but I have to tell you about the newest flavor. It's called Wild Huckleberry, and I'm addicted to it, and I don't know why, because in general, I'm not a fan of the fruity flavors. I mean, they're okay on ice cream and fruit. I like the savory ones like the curry and the sweet heat. This is what I've been using every day for salad dressing. It's so good. This is my third bottle. So I've done a couple of videos using it that you can find on my YouTube channel. Every Wednesday at two o'clock, I release a recipe video called Weight Loss Wednesday, and I've done two. And I think you'll really like what I did, especially tomorrow's. So he's going to be making some really great recipes, including lemon poppy seed muffins. And welcome him to the show. Hey, Tommy Balsamic, how you doing? Hi, Chef. Wonderful having you uh, in our kitchen again this month. So, but I told you earlier, Tuesdays are my favorite day of the week because every Tuesday night is bowling night. And uh, I'll be hitting the bowling alley in a couple of hours. And it's a, one of my favorite activities. Uh, besides singing, body surfing, bowling is at the top of my list. Have you ever, how many strikes in a row have you bowled the most? Um, you know, probably, well, at one point, Ethel, would you hand me that pin, please? Um, uh, about four years ago, um, uh, it was, it was a real thrill, uh, that, um, we hit, um, I had a, this is one of the pins. I had 12 strikes in a row and this is a, one of the pins out of the lanes for my perfect 300 game. It was 12 strikes in a row. And uh, that happened on March the 4th in 2014 on lanes 13 and 14 at Yokeo Bowl in, in Ukiah. And I had a perfect game and I, I bowled my entire life and never had the, you know, I, I was so afraid that I wouldn't be able to have a perfect game and all the thousands of games that I bowled. And finally, I hit one perfect game. Was that, and so only, it only happened once a perfect game, huh? That's it. That's all that I've ever done. And I've bowled thousands and thousands of games in my life. I've been on bowling leagues. I won state championships in high school and college. And, uh, and it wasn't until I was 55 uh, that I finally uh, got a, a perfect game. And I, so it was a thrill to actually do that. And I was nervous as can be in the 10th frame trying to get the last three strikes. And it happened. And I... I'll be able to die happy now that I've got a perfect game. If you, if you did it once, how come you can't do it again? Well, you really have to have luck on your side because I, uh, one of the balls that I threw at that game, it went on the wrong side of the head, pin, but I still got a strike. So that was lucky. And a lot of things can go wrong in bowling. But my average is about 205, which is really good. But it's so difficult to throw 12 strikes in a row in a game, you know, in league conditions. Wow. Did somebody have to verify it? Was there somebody there that could prove that you did it? It was in actual league. There probably were 75 guys who were all uh, watching because when someone goes into the 10th frame, most of the bowling alley stops bowling and everybody comes down to watch to see if you get the three strikes in the 10th. And so everybody did. There were probably 75, 80 guys down there. And I threw the last ball and the pins exploded and the crowd went wild. And it was the mo one of the most exhilarating ex experiences in my life to actually do, you know, that for bowling. And, uh, and then they gave you, uh, uh, it's certified because you get a, a nice little a ring that says 300 on it and, um, and you get a certificate and whatnot. So it's sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress and the league secretary sends in all the paperwork. So it's all verified and I'm in the books forever, uh, you know, wherever they're held. So did people tonight I'll try and do it again. Did people stand up and cheer? Oh my gosh, the crowd went wild. It was, it's really exciting. Usually there's only one or two uh, chances for a 300 game each year. Uh, and there were 16 teams. And so there, you know, there are about 80 or 90 
people in there. And um, it was just exciting as can be to actually do a lifelong dream in the world of bowling to hit a 300 game. So okay. that's amazing. Well, Mandy says, are you on a league and what's your team name? Uh, the <laughs> team name is uh, in Windsor, about 45 minutes south of Ukiah. Uh, the team name is Starkey's. It's a, 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 uh, it's a brand new, I didn't even know the name of the team that I was joining. Uh, because the bowling alley in Ukiah shut down during COVID and it's gone now. So we are now uh, doing uh, uh, a team name that is some, uh, I'm not even sure what they do. I didn't even realize the name of the team. I just wanted to bowl on any team. And so some of the fellas from Ukiah went down to Windsor for this year's uh, league. So I, the name of the team is Starkeys and I have no idea what they do, but I'm just happy to be on a team, that's all. Nice, nice. Does Ethel bowl with you? She does not. She's got arthritis in her thumb, so it's really difficult and painful for her to bowl. I would love it if, if we could bowl together, and maybe someday when we're retired uh, that we'll be able to be on a bowling team together on a mixed league, because that'd be a lot of fun uh, for us to, to bowl together on there, and we could win another state championship or something. Well, couldn't she just take the ball like this and go like that? which you can hold it with two hands and only put your two fingers in it and throw it uh, two-handed. And two-handed bowling is becoming much more popular. And it's easier uh, for people who have arthritis in their thumb or their wrist to hold it with two hands and just throw it down that way. So that will work. And, and when we have time, I will teach her how to do that. So that'd be Terrific. a lot of fun. Terrific. So what three recipes have you got for us today? Okay, so to start off, uh, the first one is something we made uh, last night. Uh, it's a lemon poppy seed mini muffins from our friend Rita. And she says to start with a preheated oven at 350 degrees. You're gonna soak eight pitted dates in a half a cup of plant-based milk, set those bad boys aside for a while, let them soak. Now, in a food processor, pulse one cup of rolled oats until it's a coarse like flour texture. Now add to those uh, oats in the food processor, a very ripe banana, a tablespoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of our lemon balsamic, two juiced lemons, the juice of two lemons. Now she put in six drops of living essential uh, oils, the Vitality lemon, which is food grade, but of course that's optional in the SOS free world. Two teaspoons of baking powder, uh, then add the soaked dates uh, with the milk and you process that until it's really well mixed and you pour all that into a bowl. Stir in a tablespoon of poppy seeds, tablespoon of chia seeds, two cups of rolled oats and you stir that really well. And you drop into a mini cupcake or a brownie size bite uh, pan, small ones. If you have the silicone with no oil, that's best. Sprinkle the top with poppy seeds and pop them into the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. You can check the doneness uh, with a, a toothpick coming out clean. And if you make muffin size, just cook them a little bit longer and check them like that. Uh, you can let them cool for a few minutes and then they'll pop out of the silicone uh, form better. And if you want to drizzle just a smidgen more, a couple drops of the lemon balsamic on top of them, that's optional. Now, we actually did something by mistake. We put two cups of the oats into the food processor and, and buzzed that. And then we only had one cup of rolled oats left over to do it that way. And they turned out fantastic. So uh, I just felt that the texture of the, of the little muffins worked out beautifully, even though we put twice as much flour in it as it was supposed to, it turned out just fine. So you can go either way with that one. So that's the muffins. And here they are for all these cute little muffins here. And we will uh, easily take these to work. And by the time they, uh, uh, you know, we get to work, those will all be gone this afternoon. Because Starting now. <laughs> and, and my darling bride has eaten the first one. 
So Susan that's says, the mini muffins. Susan says, hi, Tom. Absolutely love California balsamic. And thank you for calling me to personally explain how the red sweet onion balsamic changes color. Yep. Good, great customer service. 24 hours. You can call this man, puts his number right on the bottle. And if you haven't tried this flavor next time you order, I don't want you to get a big bottle because you might not like it. Ask for your free sample. You get two with my name. And uh, I would I would suggest maybe you try it. So the, the Huckleberry has had fantastic reviews, even though it's only been um, on our website here just barely a few days. So we're getting really good reviews from it. And I'm glad that you really like it, Chef. And um, somebody put it in their pudding that they were making. Somebody put it in some yogurt. Uh, other people are putting it on fresh fruit. Of course, green salads and vegetables. You can roast them a little bit as well. Oh, uh, Patrick just said that in the chocolate pie recipe that we had last month, that would be a fantastic ingredient to use. Instead of the sweet heat, use the huckleberry balsamic to make that pie. That would be fantastic. You'll see that recipe on our website uh, from last month's um, uh, broadcast. So try that one. Okay. Nice. So, and thank you, Susan, for saying that. And there, I try to call people all the time. I think I've had uh, half a dozen calls this morning from people. And yes, my personal telephone number is on well over uh, one and a half million labels that are in our warehouse and all over the country. So that's a kick that people say, you actually do answer your phone. I said, well, it's my actual telephone number. No one else can answer it. <laughs> so uh, let's see, recipe number two. Uh, it's from our friend Paige Alexander, and she always writes a beautiful little paragraph explaining the dish uh, when she does this, and here's this, this month's. If you want to celebrate all things grown in the earth without getting dirt under your fingernails, then try this one. All the flavors, all the colors, all the nutrition just waiting for your belly. Add or subtract as desired, if you love one more than the other, feel free to go heavy with that ingredient. This entree has no rules. Just let your cravings be your way, guide your way. So Paige, you're so eloquent. I just love it when you do things like this. Her uh, air fry recipe, uh, in her version, we uh, had a butternut squash. We trimmed and diced it. A bunch of radishes that were trimmed and halved or quartered. Uh, we used some red peppers because we couldn't find radishes at the store the other day. Uh, Brussels sprouts trimmed and halved. Baby potatoes trimmed and halved. Uh, parsnips trimmed and diced. Um, and then we have carrots trimmed and diced. A uh, red onion. Now, we found a red onion the other day that was long and skinny from the local farmer's market. That was just such an unusual shape that we uh, said we were going to use that one in in our presentation. So the, the farmer's market vendor was uh, excited to hear that. And uh, then we took a quarter cup of Simply Lemon and all those uh, veggies all into a bowl, quarter cup of uh, the lemon balsamic right in the bowl and just toss to coat them thoroughly, pop them into the oven. Um, now you can do the air fryer, but it, our air fryer is so small, it would take uh, several batches of doing that. So we put them on two large cookie sheets and into the regular oven at uh, 400 uh, and 425 for about 50 minutes. And, and that worked out really well. Um, a little bit of pepper over the top and a little bit more lemon balsamic to finish the dish. We put this one over some coleslaw, uh, but you can do it on a bed of uh, baby spinach. You could do that with some grains. Um, it, they're, they're, again, as Paige said, there are no rules for this one. Whatever the flavors, ingredients you like best, to just pour them right over and bake a lot of it because this is a great one to make a lot of it, to have lots of leftovers. You know, I would normally nor, always put this over quinoa or brown rice uh, is how we would enjoy those. So that's another easy and just delicious uh, option. Paige, thank you so much for your recipe. Okay, um, 
the story continues. We, I finally just got back from the high school reunion, being traveling around the world uh, for six solid months. I had to get back to Hawaii and start working again because I had been slacking off for an entire six months. So when I got back to Hawaii, um, I applied and got a job at the Maui Prince Hotel down in the south end of McKenna. It was brand new back in 1986-ish. And uh, I started working there in one of the restaurants. And it's a funny thing that happened at uh, working at the, at the restaurant. The world's richest person actually came because he was the owner of the Prince Hotel line, uh, the chain of hotels. And this was the first time that he had actually ever been to Maui. He came to the resort to, uh, uh, to see it. And he came down to the restaurant that I was working at. And he came down and he literally walked up to me and asked me some silly question about, um, you know, how many desserts do you have on the menu? I told him, oh, we have four of them. And I named them. And he simply walked away. And the staff and the management who were following him all around the hotel came up to me and asked me, what did he ask? What did he ask? And I said, you just want to know about the desserts. <laughs> Nothing important at all. But uh, I thought that was funny. And as he came into the hotel, uh, at least 30 or 40 of the employees uh, held little Japanese and American flags and were waving them as he came in. One of his personal assistants put his shoes that he wears indoors, one in front of the other. And as he was walking in, walking in he literally took off one shoe and uh, and stepped into his other shoe, took off the other one and stepped into the other shoe. As in the middle of his stride, he never broke stride. He just simply walked out of one into the other. And uh, apparently he does this everywhere he goes. If he's outside, he wears one pair of shoes. And if he's indoors, he does another. And I thought, is this guy coddled and <laughs> does whatever he wants? Being the world's richest person, you can do whatever you want. So that was a kick in the pants to do that. And over time, I transferred to the fine dining room upstairs at the Prince Hotel. And I met a young fella named Scott, who was uh, one of the uh, captains. And Scott could speak Japanese uh, pretty well. So over time, I had just told him that a few years back, I had taken a trip to Japan but had a hard time, you know, uh, speaking with anyone since I didn't speak any Japanese. And he said, I speak the language, but I've never been to Japan. So he and I popped over to Japan for about 10 days, traveling around to different Prince hotels, meeting employees who we knew who had worked at the Maui Prince. And uh, over time, we realized that uh, when we got a Japan Times newspaper, I opened it up and here in the last page and a half were 150 to 200. Uh, oh, you froze. Uh, you froze and your sound with, went away. Yeah, and with the, um, the, the Japan Times newspaper, it had uh, almost 200 job openings for English instructors. And when I saw that I went, I am moving to Japan. And uh, just a couple months later, I actually uh, ended up uh, uh, moving to Japan and the story will continue from there. So what a kick in the pants. Mandy wants to know if you're writing down all these stories in your memoir, Travels with Tommy. <laughs> well, I actually have all these notes in with uh, each one of our broadcasts. Uh, I do have uh, all of that in and so, each one of these papers is in our, uh, are in with all the recipes. And so, yeah, Travels with Tommy out there might happen here in a few years. I don't know if it's, your camera's moving. You're going like this now. It's like shaky. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, really weird. Oh, that is unusual. Okay, well, we'll, uh, 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 we'll have Patrick, our tech guy here, try and. Do you guys see that? It's like vibrating oh. back and forth. Oh, it's, it's, oh. Uh, Patrick is going to be able to uh, do a setting on there. All set? Oh, yeah, they see the, it. 
the phone was having a little uh, a little seizure here, and so it, okay. it's now all good here. Good question from Gisela. Do your vinegars contain sulfites? And Suze, Susan wants to know how long does it take to make a batch of vinegar? It's a Zoom quake. So, That's funny. Yeah. The, um, uh, the sulfites, they're, Patrick, sulfites in the, the balsamic. There are a little bit of sulfites. I have to ask you. Oh, yes, right. So, thank you. Um, Patrick said that in the frequently asked questions page on our website, um, we do uh, speak about the sulfites, and I'm pretty sure there are some in there because anything that's fermented grapes has a small amount of sulfites in it. If I remember right, um, where I was back, it was something like one one thousandth of what's needed to hit the California state oh. state requirement, which is one one thousandth. It's a tiny amount of sulfites, one one thousandth of of uh, a per percentage of what California considers to have sulfite. So technically there is, but realistically there's not. So uh, that's the answer for that one. And uh, the other question was, uh, oh, how long does it take to make a... Now, we purchased the balsamic vinegar from a distributor who imports it from uh, Modena, Italy. We get it in 55 gallon drums. So um, when we're doing a batch of, of balsamic, well, it depends on what flavor it is. Some flavors take dramatically longer than other ones do. Uh, the dill mustard seed takes almost an hour to clean the dill really well, wash it, dry it, or pat it dry, grind up the, the, the mustard seed, and blend all that together. That probably takes an hour to do one bucket. But then something like uh, Gilroy garlic, just blending, uh, you know, a, a big pile of garlic in the food processor, dumping into a bucket takes five minutes. So some flavors are dramatically faster than other ones are. But uh, it will still take a, a long time. Anything with a fresh ingredient, it, it does take a while. The curry powder, that's not too fast, uh, not, not too long. Still have to blend the curry in some balsamic make sure it's completely smooth and creamy, and then add it to the four and a half gallon bucket of balsamic. Uh, that's how much we make per batch is four and a half gallons. So because it's small batch, you get a much better, higher quality uh, item than you're trying to make it in a 200 gallon kettle. That's why our products can't be co-packed by a big company. It has to be done uh, small batches to be done accurately. So, and that's what we will do for many, many years. So hope that answers your question. Great, thank okay. you. Okay. And finally, uh, the last recipe here is from our friend Maureen, and it's a Simply Lemony Roasted Pear Rice Pudding. And this is really good. I love the texture of this. First of all, six fresh pears divided. Now she used Yanju, Bosque, and Bartlett. So she did uh, you know, a three try. Um, but any ripe pear will, would, should work fine. Uh, one half cup of golden raisins and a tablespoon of ground flax seed. Now she cut the pears in half and remove the seeds and the stem and set aside one pear, put that aside because you're gonna put that on the top. Roast five of the pears in an air fryer or oven until brown and bubbly. Uh, I used an air fryer at 390 degrees for about 20 minutes. Put the roasted pears and any juice from the cooked pears into a bowl and mash them with a fork, leaving large chunks. It's just great texture when you've got a big chunk of pear in, in the pudding. It comes out to about two cups of roasted pears. You add the golden raisins and ground flaxseed to the bowl with the roasted pears set aside and assemble all the other ingredients. Now the other ingredients are four cups of uh, cold leftover brown rice. She used lung bird short grain brown rice, one third a cup of simply lemon balsamic, a, a one lemon juiced, the rind, uh, the zest of a lemon, a teaspoon of cardamom, a teaspoon of cinnamon, half teaspoon of vanilla, two cups of plant milk, we always used almond milk, 
uh, a half a cup of date paste and the, you're gonna use the pear that you had on reserve for the top. Now in a large bowl, mix together the rice, the lemon, the juice, the zest, cardamom, vanilla, cinnamon, milk, and the date paste. Mix them together really well. Then you add the roasted pears, raisins, and ground flaxseed and incorporate all that really well. Pour that into a nine by nine roasting pan and slice the remaining pears and, and set them right on top of the mixture. A little bit of cinnamon to put over the top of that and pop that into the oven, 350 degrees for 45 minutes. You can turn on the broiler for the final five minutes to brown the top, which is a nice effect. Uh, remove from the oven, drizzle with a little bit extra lemon balsamic, cool it down. It's just better if it's cooled and it gets a little bit more solid. Now, if you like it a little bit mushy, eat it warm. Uh, or, you know, at room temperature. I had some last night and I thought while well, they were still warm and I absolutely thought they were fantastic. Now, the one thing that I will say, uh, cardamom is a really strong spice in my book and that the a teaspoon of cardamom was pretty strong to me. So I, um, I would probably put a smidgen less than that, but I thought this was fantastic. And here are all the the friendly little bites that came out of it here. So I, I thought that was a fantastic dish. And of course you can put any other fruit in there that you wanted to uh, just because, uh, but the pears worked out beautifully. So Maureen, that was a fantastic recipe. Thank you so much for that. And um, um, I will be enjoying this and we're gonna make another batch of that. Uh, and uh, tweak it just the way I like it. I'm really looking forward to that as well. So all is, all is good. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, those look delicious. We're going to, um, um, let's see, the next month's um, flavor of the month, and this is going to be a good one. It's right up your alley, chef. No bowling pun intended. We're doing Seven Herb Italian. Oh boy, that'll uh, be that you great. inspired. So if anyone has uh, recipes that you want to uh, submit for next month's broadcast, I'm not sure what the date is for the first Tuesday. I imagine uh, whenever Actually, it is. you know, Thomas, we got to do the second Tuesday that month because we have the GI Health oh. Summit. Okay. I, I, and so hold on, there's something going on. Oh, I, I think, yeah, I think you have it on there as the 17th. And oh, 14th, uh, the Tuesday, the 14th. Let me look. Cause, and you okay. know, I did a whole video. Um, yeah, it's gotta be two o'clock. Oh God. It's got, we, can we do a different day? That is such a bad day for sure. me. You just tell me when chef maybe, and we'll do it then. But, this, but, maybe we can do it Monday. I I'm sorry to do that. It's just, I, I work for this lady. I'm too, oh, it's just it's such a it's got another job out there. Yeah. It's such, I've got, I'm doing all the interviews for the, for the summit. And it's like, I'm all backed up at like three o'clock. I, I hear you. You <laughs> just tell me when chef and we'll do it then. So I'm not worried about the date, okay. but we'll be okay. using seven herb Italian uh, for that. And that'll work out really well because that's our best selling flavor as you predicted. Yeah. Maybe we can do it Wednesday, Thursday or Friday when I don't have double shows already. That would be so good. You got it. Yeah. Absolutely. You're a busy camper. Oh, December's a tough month. So, um, this is available for order if people want to try it or even as a sample if they want to get the two free samples using Chef AJ, correct? Oh, of course. And, and next month, we're going to introduce another new flavor. Um, it's going to be cucumber, crisp cucumber. All we've done is taken cucumbers and peel them, chop them, puree them, put them into the, two, uh, the four and a half gallon bucket of balsamic, blend it and bottle it. And uh, even though it's not going to be on the website until the beginning of December, but you can ask for uh, one of your samples uh, in the order notes box at the bottom of the checkout page. Uh, Chris Cucumber can be one of the samples. So we're sending them out now for anybody who wants to have a little sneak preview of the cucumber balsamic. Yep. Um, Apple wants to know, is the creator of any of the recipes today in the chat with us? Do they watch? Well, I don't know. As a matter of fact, if anybody, uh, if uh, Maureen, Paige, or Rita 
Uh, I know Rita works as a teacher during the day, so I don't know if she'd be able to watch, but Paige may have been, and Maureen, she's, uh, I imagine that Maureen was watching, yes, uh, yeah, because she's done so many wonderful recipes. We have a nice comment from Susan. Those who are watching, if you've never tried California balsamic, go get the sampler. You'll fall in love. I never make salad dressings anymore because there's so many flavors to choose from. It's awesome on everything you eat. We should put that on your website. The seven herb Italian is better than any Italian dressing out there. I couldn't agree more. And I think I did a whole video with doing it like set in seven recipes. I used it. You did use it. Absolutely yeah. you did. And people still comment about that. They call me up or text me saying, I watched Chef AJ do uh, seven recipes in 30 minutes. And uh, oh, we get people talking about that all the time. That's the beauty of YouTube. Nice, nice. Well, great. Well, thank you, uh, Tommy Balsama. Good luck tonight. I hope you buy uh, bowl another perfect game. What's a turkey <laughs> in bowling? What's a turkey? Turkey just means three strikes in a row. Oh, Cool. I, don't, I, won't, I don't want to tell you what a uh, four strikes in a row is. <laughs> they nicknamed that a ham bone. I really? Why. I wonder why they but do they that for did. animals. Well, all you need is two turkeys and a ham bone, and that's your perfect <laughs> I will do my best, Chef. If I do, I will, I will text you immediately uh, if I shoot a 300 game tonight. Yeah, and I, I miss you in comedy class. I come. I hope you'll come back. Susan, he said his average is like in the low 200s. So that's pretty darn good. Yep. So all is good, Chef. I look forward to seeing you whenever it is next month. You just let me know when and where and we'll be here. And tomorrow at two o'clock, my recipe featuring Huckleberry comes out. I don't want to tell you what it is. I want you to be surprised, but it's delicious. I think. I will look forward to seeing it, Chef. I will. I'll watch it for sure. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Tommy Balsamic. And thank you all for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Carla Rodriguez. So I bet she'll be great. Take care, Tommy, Ethel and Patrick. Thanks for making my favorite vinegar. Thanks, Chef. Talk to you again. Bye bye.